Welcome to the Ninth Minute with Riaza Khan. And now, here's Riaza Khan. Thank you. My name is Reha Zaken. I'm an amateur astronomer and creator of the Stardial Sky Map. I became interested in astronomy a few years ago when I bought a telescope. Astronomy is one of my favorite hobbies, and I hope you will find the Stardial as fascinating as I do. It inspired me to write The Ninth Minute, a novel about December 2012, as explained by the Mayan cosmogenesis. One tidbit of astronomical information most people seem to know is their sun sign, but few people know what it actually means. Does your horoscope seem a little bit off? Does it seem to be written for someone else? Chances are it is. If you ask a 100 people when their sun sign is, Most of them will be able to tell you, but the fact is they may not be correct. The Stardial Sky Map shows the 13 constellations that form the ecliptic. In the course of one year, the sun visits a number of constellations. This path is called the ecliptic and is divided into the 12 well-known constellations of the zodiac. As viewed from the Earth, the sun really visits 13 constellations. The ecliptic runs exactly along the middle of the zodiac constellations and the 13 constellation name of Ophiuchus by ancient astronomers. Ignored by the horoscopes, the constellation Ophiuchus between Scorpio and Sagittarius is the key to understanding the end of times. Ophiuchus heel is crushing the serpent's constellation Scorpio. He holds and tries to keep the fiery flying serpent whose head, constellation serpent Caput, is reaching for the crown, constellation Corona Borealis. An image of the constellations I'm discussing right now is displayed at the link to this radio show on Blog Talk Radio. To view a demo of the sky map and how it works, navigate to www.stardial.us. Learn all about it with the Stardial. Click on Demo and use the arrow to find your date of birth. Find out where the sun was when you were born. You could be an Ophiuchus. Opposites attract. Use the Stardial to find your opposite. Enjoy, and let me know what you think of the star dial on my Facebook wall at Facebook forward slash ninth minute or Twitter at rzaken. When the sun system was set up more than 2,000 years ago, the sun's path was divided into 12 equally spaced signs, regardless of the constellation's size. Cancer, for example, is a small constellation, and Pisces is very large, but both were accorded an equal 112 of the sun's annual path. This simplification is the result of early astronomers' dislike of the number 13. Superstitions about the number 13 have been with us for thousands of years and still persist today. Claiming that there are only 12 constellations is similar to maintaining the Earth is flat. The star dial is positive proof the horoscopes label people incorrectly and are a false teaching. My website, www.stardial.us, has a demo of the star dial sky map and interesting information about this topic. Want to see the ninth minute web page? Go to my website www.ninthminute.com. The ninth minute will return right after this word from my sponsors. One astronomy tidbit most people seem to know is their sun sign. As viewed from the Earth, the sun passes in front of 13 constellations, not 12, during the course of one year. This path of the sun is called the ecliptic. 
The ecliptic runs exactly along the middle of the zodiac constellations and the 13th constellation named Ophicus, or the Serpent Bearer. When the sun sign system was set up more than 2,000 years ago, the sun's path was divided into 12 equally spaced signs. This simplification is the result of early astronomers' dislike of the number 13. Superstitions about the number 13 have been with us for thousands of years and still persist today. Claiming that there are only 12 constellations is similar to maintaining the Earth is flat. The sun is in front of the stars of Ophicus during the first half of December. About one person in 20 is an Ophicus, but few of them know it. Although overlooked by the zodiac, Ophicus, or the serpent bearer, is the god of medicine and always shown with a staff with a serpent around it. Star dials showing the 13 constellation boundaries are available in our store and also on eBay. And now, back to Leah with more information concerning December 2012. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my show, The Ninth Minute. This is Reha Zaken. And in this segment, uh, we're going to examine the meaning of December 2012 as described in the Mayan Cosmogenesis. What is the meaning of the signs and wonders in the heavens? As you look around, it is obvious the world is coming apart at the seams. There is strife and chaos, war and starvation, lies and deception everywhere, and a faltering economy that is at the edge of collapse, which brings us to the question, what is really happening? Within the next decade, numerous significant astronomical events will take place. Will the world end? The Mayans considered December 21st, 2012, to be the completion of two major influential cycles of approximately 26,000 years in both the precession cycle of the Earth and the direct alignment of our Sun with the center of the Milky Way galaxy. The odds of these two events occurring at exactly the same time are phenomenal. Coincidentally, the plane of the ecliptic and the Milky Way galaxy will form a cross in the sky as viewed from the Earth with the sun marking the center of the cross and properly aligned exactly over the center of our galaxy as viewed from the Earth. A small minority of people believe the year 2012 will bring cataclysmic events unequaled in human history. They picture the world being destroyed by fire, pole shifts, tsunamis losing our sun to the frozen star at the center of our galaxy, and even an alien invasion. But none of that is going to happen. According to mathematics and the science of astronomy, more likely nothing will happen. Nothing. However, because people want something to happen, they will probably make things happen and very likely unpleasant things. Karl Marx observed that when a theory grips the masses, it becomes a material force. The doctrine of Armageddon has gripped the imagination of several extremely motivated and influential groups, including people in the United States, Israel, and the Muslim world, and the doctrine is quickly becoming an unstoppable force across the world. How does Armageddon compare with Apocalypse, for they are not the same event? Armageddon is the great consuming war to be fought among the people of the earth. Apocalypse is the natural or supernatural cataclysm expected to come after Armageddon. Trying to oppose a natural catastrophe, such as a volcano or earthbound comet, is pointless. But Armageddon is different. Of all the potential catastrophes, Armageddon is the only one we might have the power to prevent. In the final clash between good and evil, some experts predict two to three billion people are supposed to perish. Evangelical Christians are a group eager to precipitate Armageddon, looking forward to the rapture, the exalted moment when, before the battle begins, true and faithful Christians 
are literally lifted up into the air to join God and have the opportunity to observe the battle from heaven. From studying the Mayan cosmogenesis, the end of the Mayan calendar is just that, the end of the Mayan calendar. The study of real versus mechanical time can be fascinating and, well, very time-consuming. So will the world end? December 21st, 2012, it's considered to be the completion of two major influential cycles of approximately 26,000 years in both the precession cycle of the Earth and the direct alignment of the Sun in our solar system with the center of the Milky Way galaxy. What people want to believe is the gravitational pull of the frozen star at the center of our galaxy will destroy our sun on December 21st, 2012. The Maya had extensive knowledge of astronomy, including the phenomenon called precession. This is the wobbling of the Earth's axis due to the flatness of the Earth itself and the gravitational influence of the sun and the moon. This causes the sun to run behind the constellations of the zodiac. We are now plus one constellation behind, and that will be two in a matter of centuries. The center of the Milky Way galaxy is in Sagittarius, and at some moment in the year, every December 17 or 18, the sun is near this center as we look in the sky. However, on December 2012, it will be aligned with a precision um, unequaled before. There are several theories about what will happen on December 21st, 2012, and astronomers know this will basically be a non-event. Nothing will happen. This doesn't stop people from speculating. Science has never been able to compete with imagination. The upside to this controversy is people will be more curious about the universe as we approach 2012 and study the sky more. This event will generate a lot of interest in math and science, we hope. Scientists have discovered frozen stars in many galaxies and assume that is the normal situation or even a criterion for the formation or existence of galaxies. There is a frozen star at the center of our own galaxy. Frozen stars appear to be regularly um, gobbling other stars and anything caught in their field of gravity. So when our sun is in front or over the center of our galaxy, properly aligned with the frozen star at the center of our Milky Way galaxy, will anything happen? Uh, and of course, um, the answer is no. Scientists know frozen stars influence the rest of the galaxy. However, the gravitational influence on our sun on December 21st, 2012, will be extremely small. Assume that if the sun is directly over the frozen star, it means that in the sky it is exactly the same direction as the nucleus of the galaxy. Precession may slowly bring the sun's position on this date towards the exact center of the Milky Way galaxy. The effect of gravity decreases when distance increases to the power of three. For example, the sun and moon cause the tides, but although the, although the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, it is also 400 times closer. The net effect is that the moon has a three times larger effect on our tides than the sun. The effect of the frozen star at the center of the Milky Way galaxy on our sun should be negligible. We're looking at 3.6 million suns distance or, coincidentally, 26,000 light years or 1.6 billion times the distance sun to Earth. So the gravitational influence of the 
frozen star on our sun will be trillion times smaller than the influence of the sun on our earth. December 21st, 2012 falls on a Friday. Fortunately, by Monday, December 24th, Christmas Eve, people will be free of worry and able to enjoy Christmas. In combination with the Christmas holiday, we will be having a long weekend through Wednesday, December 26, 2012, enough time for people to recover from this, well, non-event. So what should you do? To feel better, the most important step you can take is to be aware of this issue. Take reasonable precautions to ensure that you, your family, and friends are safe and prepared. Most people will not have time to master the skills required for survival should technology fail. Drilling a well, growing food, foraging, hunting, fishing, building a house, low-tech medicines, making clothing, woodworking, and metalworking are beyond what most people will have time to master. Short-term planning should involve a 72-hour survival kit. Everyone should have enough food, water, and emergency supplies to last 72 hours. Anticipate how many people you want to include in your emergency plan and pay special attention to the needs of any elderly, small children, or infants on your list. Don't forget radios and first aid supplies. In addition to water, The most important supply in both short and long-term planning is energy. In the event the power grid fails, it would be important to have a backup power supply. Though not everyone can be off the grid, it is possible to take at least one circuit in your home off the grid. A hybrid wind solar unit makes sense because when the sun does not shine, the wind blows, and Theoretically, generation is feasible around the clock. Should a magnetic pole shift occur, this is another scenario, suddenly in 2012, both wireless and radio communications will be disrupted. The only difference between radio and wireless waves is the frequency. The effect of a magnetic pole shift on the electric grid may be marked by loss of power and consequently the failure of radio and wireless transmitters. The power grid transmission would not be affected by a magnetic pole shift. Electromagnetic waves generated by electricity traveling through the wires are not affected by magnetic fields. The electrons would still be able to go Home, home, home. But what if power generators, which rely on magnetic fields to generate electricity, all of a sudden have three times the magnetic pool under them? Actually, it won't matter because they won't operate underwater anyway. Antarctica will become a paradise in Arkansas, for example, will be under a glacier like Kentucky once was before global warming from dinosaur SUVs melted the ice. My point is, though transmission should not be affected, energy generation using conventional sources would be. Thus, if you cannot afford to take your entire house off the grid, please consider making some backup power using renewable energy power generation sources. And along those lines, everyone should have a wind-up radio, water-resistant, equipped with a flashlight, a siren, and a cell phone charger, just in case wireless communication is restored. Oh, no, it's the end of the world, the end of humanity, and the nurse is all out of lollipops. Most modes of transportation, such as airplanes and ships, Navigate by satellite communication. All pilots use GPS for convenience. However, pilots know how to use sextants and charts to navigate in the absence of electronic communication. If your pilots paid attention in school, travel should be safe. Take a step back and look at how you prepared your home for a natural emergency, such as a storm, flood, or other natural emergency. 
Have on hand the supplies you would in the event of any emergency, such as a storm, flood, or other natural emergency. Pay your bills before December 2012 and keep paper copies of all your financial records. Bank statements, mortgage payments, make a list of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds that you own and how these funds are invested. Don't give out your credit card or banking information to someone you don't know. Countries throughout the world will experience similar problems as we will in the United States. As a result, contact with family members and friends in foreign countries may be difficult if phone service or power is interrupted. Traveling to remote parts of the world could be difficult. Are you a warrior? Someone who tends to panic in an emergency, whether you're a warrior or not, it's wise to stay informed. Articles and books about the 2012 phenomenon are big business, and the list of titles grows longer every day. Don't let your frustrations get the better of you come December 2012 if you do experience minor delays and inconveniences. Put your feet up and relax. Get out and take a walk. Try deep breathing exercises. Get together with friends and console yourself with the thought that we are all in the same boat on the same blue marble. In closing, a favorite quote from Jacob's Ladder. If you're frightened of dying and you're holding on, you'll see devils tearing your life away. If you've made your peace, then the devils are really angels freeing you from the earth. The Ninth Minute airs every Thursday at 10 p.m. Central on Bug Talk Radio. Thanks for joining us, and please tune again next time for the Ninth Minute.